Good morning, Year Nines. I'm Mr. Vincent. Hope you're all well and staying safe. For today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the second sets of equations that we need to know, be able to recall and apply, also rearranging those, these equations. Before we proceed, I suggest that you go get a pen, a ruler, a calculator, and a few blank sheets of paper to practice the questions in the slides. Pause the video now and collect your equipment. Right, hope you've got everything needed, including the calculator. I'd like to encourage you, this might be a challenging topic, so please be ready to go through it several times so that you can understand the concept before proceeding on to the quiz. Go through the starter questions now, pause the video, and then we'll come back and do look at the answers, discuss the answers. Pause the video and try out the starter questions. Good. Hope you've tried out the starter questions. Now let's look at them together and answer them. The first question says, write the equation that links gravitational field strength G, weight W, and mass M. And that equation is W equals MG. Or you could have written the word equation, weight equals mass times gravitational field strength. That as well will be correct. The second question says, write the equation that links speed V, distance traveled T, S, and time T. And that equation, you could write it in three ways. Either you write speed equals distance divided by time, or you could say distance travel equals speed times time. Also, you could have written time equals distance divided by speed. That as well would have been correct. The third question is the strength of gravity on Earth's surface is 10 newton per kilogram. Calculate the weight of a car with a mass of 1,500 kilogram. In the question, we are given the mass and we're given the gravitational field strength. We're given mass and gravitational field strength. We simply multiply the two together and we get 15,000 newtons. 1,500 multiplied by 10 gives us 15,000 newtons. Don't forget your units. The next question says, the strength of gravity on the moon is 1.6 newtons per kilogram. If an ast astronaut's mass is 80 kilogram on Earth, what would be his weight on the moon? Now, we're given the gravitational field strength on the moon and we're given the mass again we multiply the two together because we're given mass m and g on the moon and the weight of the person of this astronaut on the moon is 128 newtons please don't forget your units the next question says a lobster creeps 10 meters along the seabed in five minutes find its average speed so we're given 10 meters that is distance we're given five minutes that is time however please be reminded that the five minutes has to be converted to seconds we cannot work with in minutes so five minutes need to be multiplied by 60 make it into seconds once that has been done you substitute into your equation speed equals the distance is 10 the, num the time is 5 times 60, which is 300, and our answer is 0 0.03 meters per second. Do not forget the unit of speed, meters per second. The last question says, a car cruises at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. How much time will it take to go 600 miles? So it says how much time, that means we're going to rearrange the equation to make time the subject of the formula. And that means we'll have an equation of time equals distance divided by speed. So that's what the equation should look like. And these are answers. So the car will need 12 hours to cover the distance of 600 miles if the car has been driving at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. 
Good. Hope you got all six questions correct. Let's proceed. The equation we use for calculating gravitational potential energy. We need to be able to recall this equation, rearrange and apply this equation, just like the other two equations we um, learned about in um, lesson one. We also write our answers using standard SI unit. So the equation for gravitational potential energy is E, or we normally say EP, equals the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by height. And we write it in symbol form as M EP equals MGH. EP equals M. G H. Again, we need to write the units. EP is gravitational potential energy. Energy is measured in joules, mass in kilograms, gravitational field strength, newton per kilogram, and then the height in meters. All of these quantities, you've come across them in earlier lessons. So now you should be quite familiar with these, these quantities and their units. As with other cases, we take an example. It says a cannonball of, of mass five kilogram is taken to the top of a tower 56 meters high. How much gravitational potential energy has the cannonball gained? Of course, when you learned about gravitational potential energy, any object raised above ground level has gravitational potential energy stored in them. Right, so in this question, we're given mass, which is 5 kilogram. We're given the height of the tower, 56 meters high. And of course, G on Earth is 10 newton per kilogram. Write a formula down, P equals MGH. We only use symbol form for uh, um, to save time or space now. Now, the mass, 5 kilogram. Height 56 meters, G 10 newton per kilogram. We've got the three quantities. We just substitute into our equation EP equals the 5, which is the mass, multiplied by 10, which is G, and 56, which is H. And the answer is 2,800 joules, the unit of energy. You can go through this again if you don't understand it and try to see and understand how we got the answer 2,800 joules. If you do understand it, proceed to the next slide and let's and take on this practice question. It is how much gravitational potential energy does a 0 0.5 kilogram book gain when it is lifted up 1.5 meters onto a shelf G equals 10 newtons per kilogram? Pause the video now and try out this practice question. Hope you've attempted the question. Now let's go through the question together. We know EP equals MGH. M from this question is 0 0.5 kilogram. The height is 1.5 meters. And G on Earth is equal to 10 newton per kilogram. We've got the three values M, 0 0.5, height, 1.5 g 10 substitute into equation and the answer is 7.5 joules hope you had it correct now try these four questions out and see whether you understand the concept we've just looked at pause the video now and try them out right hope you've tried out these questions let's look at the answers first one we're given the mass as 2 kilogram, G as 10, and then the height as 200. You multiply these three quant numbers together, you have 4,000 joules. Number two, again, we're given MGH, you multiply the three numbers. Number three, 1632 joules, 1,632 joules. And number four is 8,400,000 joules. 
Now, that last answer, I want you to be aware that the 12 kilometers needs to be converted to 12,000 meters. Right. I want you to pause the video and practice rearranging this particular equation, EP equals to MGH, and make each of the variables M the subject of the formula. Then in the next question, make G the subject of the formula. And the third, make H the subject of the formula. Pause the video and try this out. Right, hope you had a go at this. Now let's see the answers. For the first, we want to rearrange the equation such that we make mass the subject of the formula. So you might be given a question wherein you've got the gravitational potential energy, you've got the field strength, gravitational field strength, you've got the height, and they have asked you to find the mass of the object. Of course, we write a standard equation in symbol form, P equals mgh. The first thing we do, we write the equation we want mass mass to be alone on this side but we have g and h with it so like in the other examples we've looked at we need to get rid of the g and h on that side so the only way to get rid of them is dividing both sides by gh if we divide both sides by gh this is what we'll get now if you notice on this right hand side of the equation g and h is in the numerator and g and h is also in the denominator so the g h will cancel out and we'll be left with ep over g h equals m now like in the other cases we just need to rewrite the equation such that the m is on the left hand side and p over g h on the right hand side and that's how we rearrange the equation to make m the subject of the formula Hope you had it right. Now let's look at the next one. We are arranging the equation to make G subject of the formula. Again, we write the equation in symbol form. Now, we want to make G the subject of the formula, but we have M and H on the same side as G. We only need G when we want to make it the subject of the formula. G should be alone on one side of the equation. So we need to get rid of the M and H. So I know you'll be saying now, oh, Mr. Vincent, we know what to do. Just divide both sides by M, H. Good, correct. You got it right. So we divide both sides by M, H. So you look at the right-hand side. Yes, M is and H are in the numerator, M and H in the denominator. So the M, H will cancel out. Perfect. You got it right. So now we are left with EP divided by MH equals G. All we need to do again, oh yes, we write it such that G is on the left hand side. And there we go. G equals EP over MH. Hope you had that correct as well. Let's look at the third rearranging of this equation. We are rearranging the equation such that H now the subject of the formula and we write a symbol form of the equation e equals mgh and if you look at the right hand side m and g are there yes i know you yeah you're already saying it we have g, m and divide both sides by m and g and then we'll have m and g in the numerator on the right m and g in the denominator the mgs cancel out so we're left with over mg equals h now we just rearrange the equation such that h is on the left and ep which is the gravitational potential energy divided by mg is on the right hand side and that's how we rearrange the equation to make h the subject of the formula hope you had all three rearrangements correct pause the video now and go through these three questions Look at the variables that are given in the question, and then that will give you a hint as to which form of the equation you need to use to rearrange it and make the unknown the subject of the formula. 
pause the video and try this out. Right, let's look at this to the practice question. For number one, you could have 80,000 joules as your answer. Number two, 6,000 meters for the height. And number three, the mass is 0 0.4 grams. Let's look at the next equation we want to look at. It's another equation we studied in year eight. Pressure equals force divided by area. We're just going through this equation. It's another equation you should be able to recall for your AQA exam. And since you've already covered it in year eight, I've decided to revise it at this point. All we need to know with this equation for now is to be able to rearrange it and make the substitutions. The standard equation pressure equals force divided by area. Pressure is normally represented by the letter P. Force F area we use A. And their symbols, their eta units are Newton are meter squared. Newt units for force is Newtons and for area is M squared. Right. So let's look at an example. The force of 20 newtons acts over an area of 2 meters squared. What is the pressure? Solution, we know the formula P equals F divided by A, force divided by area. We have a force of 20 newtons. We have an area of 2 meters squared. So the pressure is simply 20, which is the force, divided by 2, which is the area, and we have N newtons per meter squared. Here is a practice question for you. Try out. Pause the video and have a go. Right. Hope you've tried this question out. So the weight of a 100 newtons laser printer is spread over 0 0.5 meters squared. What is the pressure it exerts? The pressure, a formula, always quote your formula. P equals force divided by A. I write it in symbol form. P equals F divided by A. We know a force, weight is a force. Don't forget that. A force is 100 newtons. And the A is 0 0.5 meters squared. Substitute into your equation. It's 100 divided by 0 0.5. And we have 200 newtons per meter squared. Don't forget your units. Now, here is something for you to practice. We arrange this equation to make F the subject of the formula, and then we arrange the same equation, but this time to make A the subject of the formula. Pause the video and try this out. Answer, let's see. We arrange the equation P equal equals F divided by A to make F the subject of the formula, you should have F equals P multiplied by A. In the second case, we arrange the equation to make A the subject of the formula. We should have A equals F divided by P, or you can write it as A equals F slash P, F stroke P. That stroke still means divided by. Now we've completed this topic. If you understand the concept, then move on to completing the quiz. If you have found the concept a bit challenging, I suggest you go through this video until you're confident you've understood the topic before proceeding to complete the quiz. Thank you.